have been called by God and we've been chosen for this hour. We are no better than anyone else. We're no better than any other denomination except we have been called by his name. Our hands to the Lord. Let's pray together. We love you, Jesus. Thank you so much for everything you do. Your help, your blessings, your anointing. You've been good to us, God. We're very thankful for that. I love you. I sure would like to draw nigh to you tonight. I sure would like to feel you tonight, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 5. Thank you, Brother Connell, for the invitation. Thank you, Elder, for your hospitality. My goodness, I checked into that room, and the gal at the desk said, you got a very special room. And I went upstairs, and it was a very special room. It's big, four-poster bed. I sent pictures to my wife and said, you see what you're missing? And then I said, I miss you. They're having a ladies' tea tonight. Uh, men have never had a men's tea. Me and Brother Halstead decided years ago that wasn't important, I think. But uh, she's not here. Time for the ladies. Good to see these great men of God, Elder Newman. And my goodness, when I grow up, I hope I can be like Brother Wakefield. I tell you, if there's a perfect family, it's like a perfect marriage to me. I think it's the Wakefields. These are such godly and precious people. I can announce they're coming through Glendale, and our folks get excited, thrilled. Amen. And we just so thrilled to be here. What can I say about Brother and Sister Connell? My goodness. These folks are far above average, aren't they? Way up there. I'm telling you, it's amazing. All of our guests, we're sure glad you came and to make yourself at home. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers, everybody say prayers, and supplications, say supplications. Let's say it again. When he had offered up prayers, all right. Let's say uh, together. I'm trying to get you ride with me. Amen. Prayers, Prayers. And, supplication. and supplication. Thank you so much. With strong crying and tears. Strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. In the days of his flesh, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard. He was heard. He was heard in that he feared. Thank you tonight, Lord, for the privilege of being here. Thank you, Lord, for this good church, this good pastor. These good folks that have gathered in here, let the mind of the Holy Ghost come upon us tonight. We'll be so quick to thank you for it. We'll appreciate you so much in the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody together said, Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I'm going to try my best tonight. Uh, thank you, sis. Thank you very much uh, playing behind us. I'm going to try my best tonight to to maintain a teaching stance, if I can. I don't know how good I am. I'm kind of like these good brethren. You get the good word of the Lord, and you get feeling the anointing, and your voice raises, and your spirit gets excited. And I've been known to yell. Isn't that terrible? And holler and sweat and uh, spray the first five rows with anointing. Praise God. Or something like that. And uh, But I, I really... I have really taken it to heart, the request that was made by Pastor Connell to come and to teach on prayer, to talk about prayer. I, I do not feel like an expert in prayer. I want to tell you that at the very outset. I'm not even sure how much I'll be able to add to the wisdom 
and the direction that your pastor has given. But uh, I will tell you that I do want to be obedient to the Holy Ghost. And if the Holy Ghost will help us, good things can happen. Good things can happen. A praying church, as the pastor has already stated tonight, is a revival church. I have been on a quest. Uh, some of you brethren probably got there a long time before I did. Uh, I'm a slow learner, and uh, the best 17 years of my life were the fifth grade. But uh, I, I have been on a quest of late for the favor, the favor of God. I'm not sure how to quantify what the favor of God is. I'm not certain that I understand it altogether. But there's one thing I do know, that when the favor of God is on a man's ministry, it's a powerful ministry. When the favor of God is upon a church, a congregation, it will be a revival church. It will be a godly church. It will be a soul-saving station. It will have great, great moves of the Holy Ghost because of the favor of God. I believe that what goes on in this building behind the sacred desk and at these altars of prayer, and uh, the way our hearts receive the engrafted Word of God, uh, I believe it, it goes further than this building. I believe it goes out of the building. I believe it goes out in the community. In the church that I pastor, I often tell them, I am not preaching just for you to hear tonight, but I am preaching for every devil in Glendale, every devil in Phoenix, every devil devil in Arizona, every devil in the western United States, uh, wherever our influence may travel, I am preaching that they might hear and know that we're on, we're on their trail. And uh, we got something, we got something that works. And uh, so I preach with that authority. And the favor of God, in my opinion, is what brings that. Uh, what makes a church go from a few on the pews to to in a few weeks, you can't find seats on the pews. And chairs are being set out. What makes a congregation go from heartbroken prayers over lost children that are on their way into eternity without God because of backsliding into rejoicing where moms and dads can't even hold their peace? When I was a, a young man in uh, the church that I grew up in, there was a man that came through and he had that favor of God on him. And when he ministered, the anointing of the Lord was so evident. Spirits cried out. Uh, devils uh, revealed themselves. Uh, saints got things out of their heart and out of their spirit. Uh, some folks got washed out, but more got born in to the house of God, into the Spirit of the Lord, and they began to live for God. And that started an upward climb of revival in that particular local church, and then that spread even to the church that God has granted me to be able to pastor the favor of God, having the favor of God. The Bible says these words, when a man's ways please God, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. The Word of God teaches us that he will rebuke the devourer for our sakes. I know it's talking about tithe, but allow me to make the application here tonight in the favor of the Lord. If God be for us, the, the writer wrote, then who can be against us? Circumstances will not affect us. Time and chance will not move us. Opportunities will not dissuade us. But we will have it settled in our heart, in our spirit. This is the way. Walk ye in it. We are walking in the favor of God. Acts chapter 6 is a very familiar setting of Scripture. The apostles, after they had come to uh, the Lord and had received their commission, had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter number 2, and this was noised abroad, and it began to break out in all the city of Jerusalem and began to travel out beyond that. The Bible tells us that there was some problems that began to rear their ugly head, the Palestinian Jews and uh, those of the Hellenistic 
uh, diaspora began to have frictions. There was two races of people. One loved the land and the other loved uh, the message. And uh, they had friction. But the disciples found an answer to take care of the difficulties when they said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Now, uh, you're in real trouble tonight. I am feeling so comfortable. I feel so much at home. Your pastor has made me feel like his long-lost son. Uh, I checked the will. I've been penciled in. I just feel at home. Hallelujah. We're going to have a good time the next several nights. But tonight, uh, I feel good. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. This was their response to the urgency that pressed upon them. This is a very important point I want to make tonight. That this is their response to the urgency. The urgency of ministerial responsibility, family responsibility, church responsibility, dealing with the souls of men and walking with the Lord and preaching the Word of God. This was their response. We will give ourselves, give ourselves continually to prayer. I can tell tonight that the congregation that is gathered in this building the sound of my voice. You have come from several different assemblies, but I can tell that you are familiar with prayer. I can tell that it's serious business with you, that, that you love the feeling of being close to God, walking in the presence of the Lord. This young lady that just got the Holy Ghost Sunday night, the best thing you will ever do for yourself is start a relationship with the Lord Immediately. Don't wait to church next night, but start a relationship with the Lord immediately. Praise God. Praise God. In his book, The Tyranny of the Urgent, Charles Hummel wrote, The issue is not a shortage of time as a problem of priorities. A problem of priorities. The apostolic ministry certainly understands this timeless statement as being too Often true, true for me as a preacher, as a pastor, as a father, as a husband, and uh, too true for me at times as a saint of God, and too true uh, in the church that I pastor, that, that the priority of prayer does not seem to be very important. Now, I'm not, I, the elder and I were talking at the uh, lunch table today, and he made this point which is very, very, very true and is a fundamental point to be made in argument in trying to, trying to prove your point. That is, you can't prove anything from a negative. And I understand that. But I, I, want, I just want to say this. In my travels, in my going, in my reaching and preaching and crisscrossing the country, in my position as getting older and receiving invitations like this invitation, I am finding that there are fewer and fewer and fewer congregations that really have the burden or have the understanding or have the favor of God upon them in prayer. In prayer. Can I tell you that the most important thing that we will ever do in our lifetime is pray? And I, I want to help us tonight if the Lord will give us the anointing. This talking about the Lord and His priority in His daily life. In Mark 1 and 35, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, He went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. In Luke 5 and 16, the Bible says of the Lord, and He withdrew Himself into the wilderness and Pray, And our text says, who in the days of his flesh, when he'd offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears, never 
was a man more pressed than the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet the Bible teaches us, and he came out, Luke 22, 39 and 41. He came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives and kneeled down and prayed. I hope I'm not just spitting in the wind here tonight. I I don't feel like I am. The Holy Ghost can talk to us and help us and stir up our spirit within us. Praise God. Kneel down and prayed, 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 prayed. The crowds pressed him, but he prayed. The business of life pressed him, but he prayed. He broke bread and fishes and fed them, but he still prayed. He ministered to them all day long, and yet he still prayed. He led his disciples into the twilight hours and then still withdrew himself and prayed and prayed. Something got in that, it, well, I'm sorry to say something got in his spirit. He was the spirit. But he left us the example. And I wanted to get into my spirit that the number one priority of the work of God is first and foremost visiting with the Holy Ghost. I've told them at the church that I pastor, I love all you wonderful musicians. My wife plays the organ, and uh, I appreciate it. She leads the choir and does an excellent job, and I appreciate it. But I've told her, along with everybody else, that that's not the way we're going to the throne of God. Songs will motivate us to worship. Songs may motivate us to have a desire in the moment to talk to God But what's going to make the difference in us is when we catch that vision, catch that understanding, get that spirit in us that I cannot wait. I've got to visit with God. I can't lay in this bed. I can't stay in this house. I cannot stay off of my knees. I cannot go. God, forgive me. I've gone too long in this day. Dear God, help me. Amen. Amen. Here I am preaching. Glory to God. Glory to God. I feel like tonight the Lord wants to do something very powerful. Very powerful. Praise God. But He prayed, and He prayed, and then He prayed some more. Luke 11, 1 has already been mentioned here. Lord, teach us to pray. And He admonished them, pray always and not to faint. Luke 18 and verse 1. And I'm going to suggest to us that we cannot do less than to do what the Lord invited us to do. And that is teach us to pray. All right. Pray always. Pray always. Pray always. Pray always. Pray always. Praise God. Pray always. Pray always. Pray always. The answer that you need in everyday life is in prayer. Pray always. The help of God that you want throughout your day is found, first of all, by going to the Lord and visiting with Him, telling Him about it so that He can direct your paths uh, and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. We believe that this is a spiritual work. We believe that the two-edged sword called the Word of God is a spiritual anointed uh, book. We believe that. We handle the Word of God. And we handle as it were the very Spirit of God. But I'm telling you, until we saturate our souls uh, and saturate our church uh, and saturate our family uh, with the spirit of prayer, it becomes a dead letter. It does not help save souls. Uh, It becomes an empty, uh, futile effort. And God alone can help us to build an apostolic church. Somebody said amen. Hallelujah. I've been privileged. I've been privileged. I, 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 I want to be very kind tonight. I really do. I, I'm trying to be exceptionally kind. My spirit in me is just bouncing off the walls right now. But, but I, I grew up in church. I grew up around uh, the church. The church that I attended uh, before the evangelist I mentioned earlier came was kind of dry and, and uh, small. And uh, it was it was lifeless. But after he came, it was powerful. And it was prayer. You could hear prayer in the basement. You could hear prayer in the upper room where the men prayed. 
You could hear prayer as they came down the stairs. You could hear prayer as they visited in the presence of God. You could feel prayer when we started singing the songs. You could feel prayer when the preacher preached. You could feel prayer when the sinners started repenting. Praise God. Conviction, the anointing, the help of the Holy Ghost comes when we go to God in prayer. Is this all right? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Many of our forefathers used the term. I try to use this term. Your pastor uses this term. The term is, we talk about the intimacy of visiting with God in what we call praying it through. Praying it through. How many's ever done that? Just pray it through. It was so heavy. It was so desperate. It was so earnest. It was so pressing. It was so... It was so heavy on our spirit that there was, there was no opportunity except to pray it through. Just go find a place and say, God, I've got, I've got to have help. I've got to have help. Get up, go about the business of the day, and come back. Knock on that door one more time. I have got to have help. I have got to have help. We've got church problems. I've got to have help. I've got, I've got family problems. I've got to have help. My family's going to hell. I have got to have help. Our community lieth in wickedness. We've got to have help. There's got to be a Holy Ghost anointing that draws right off of the streets. I could tell you lots of stories of people pulling in the parking lot and saying, I don't know what it was. I don't know what happened. But I know this, something, something arrested me and stopped me. A man, a man, uh, was driving. He, he came, he got lost, really. On his way, uh, he is the owner of, uh, he and his family, the owner of a, the best gelato I've ever eaten in my life. It's outstanding. And, uh, the cantaloupe tastes like real cantaloupe. Oh, let's dismiss and go eat some right now. And, uh, but he was driving down the road and, uh, he, Felt checked. He got lost. He didn't mean to come that way. But as he drove by, he said, whoa, what's going on here? And he turned around and he came into the parking lot and he found some of our school students and some of our staff. He, what's, what is this? I'll be back. And he's never missed since. He's still hanging on, still coming around. I thank God for that. I could tell you about others. I could tell you about others that, that, that spirit of the Lord. Hey, Praying it through makes a difference. It really makes a difference. It could mean praying through from a carnal drift or praying through or praying a need through to an answer, immediate and definite. Uh, our forefathers were not looking for temporary blessings or a good shouting service, but it was to them deep calling unto deep. Praying through was the glue that held church splits together. And reveal the tactics of the enemy. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praying through was a fuel for revival fires and for Holy Ghost outpouring. Praying through was the earnest of the inheritance of a new work in a never before evangelized community. It was seeing the unseen and calling those things that were not as though they were. I don't know who I'm talking to. I really do, but maybe I can stir you up one more time. Stir your spirit up one more time. Stir your soul up one more time to join in and say, God, there's been just a little, a little slack in me. There's been a little carelessness in me. I'm feeling just a little chagrined right now, God. I'm, I, I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of scuffing my toe in a bashful sort of way because I recognize, God, that I've let some very important in dates between you and I uh, go by the wayside. Brother Bean told us the story of a woman who uh, every day at a certain time prayed. Every day. Every day. One day she was finishing up the chores and they were in extended meetings and she was very tired. And she said, Jesus, would you forgive me today and let me, let me get a, a nap. I am so tired. And she went to lay down and and she dreamt a dream. And uh, in her dream, there was this beautiful clearing. And 
there were two chairs in the clearing. And in her dream, the figure of a man came walking. And he sat down. And her, his back was to her. And she noticed in her dream that he kept looking at a watch. Kept checking a watch. Kept checking a watch. Kept checking a watch. Until he got up. And she could tell from the droop of his shoulders. And uh, the cast of his head. Kind of hanging down. And the show, slow shuffling walk that, that he was walking out of that, of that clearing. And she marveled at the dream, marveled at it. And just as he got beyond that, that little, that little place where the chairs were, uh, he turned to look and she saw the face of her Savior. And he was stricken because he had come and she had not come to visit. I want to tell you, God is interested in us seeking Him. Prayer. Praying it through. Praying it through. 1 Corinthians 14 and 15, the Apostle Paul said, I will pray with the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding also. He drew us a distinction in prayer. I know what was going on in this text. I know the abuse that was taking place. But he was still, he was still drawing for us. The elder said it tonight, and he just used the word with, with the shaded meaning and the emphasis that we caught it. And I watched you nod your heads in agreement. He said there is praying and then there is praying. And if you wrote that out, there is praying and then there is praying. It, it, it doesn't have much, but we caught the emphasis. And in this emphasis, there was the Lord. Uh, Paul said, I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. Amen. Jude 20 called it praying in the Holy Ghost. What are we doing? What are we trying to foster in the next few nights of services? I, to this afternoon after, after a nap, and uh, uh, I, I, I needed it. Hallelujah. Thank you. And uh, after that, I was praying and I was going through a lot of a lot of notes, a lot of things. And that I taught the church that I pastor in. And, and I, I said to myself, there's not enough nights. There's not enough nights to cover what the Holy Ghost would like to do. And so I'm trying to do something tonight that will help us. Praise God. Let's stand to our feet right now. Let's, let's lift our voice and pray. Let's pray. Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we are praying in the Spirit. I want you to take over this. I want you to come here, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I will not take time tonight to read several verses of Scripture that that I had intended for this service. I will save it perhaps. But in Romans chapter number 8, if you take the time to read, you will find the inadequacies of the flesh are being recounted. And uh, the help, the help, Spirit, Holy Ghost, initiated solutions for His church. It is the Spirit helping, the Spirit interceding, the Spirit working, that which is for our good according to the purpose of Him who called us unto this work. Effectual, powerful prayer, prayer, prayer in the Spirit. The Spirit. I'll never forget a time when there was, there was great urgency. And I happened to be with, with my pastor. My pastor is a man of prayer. He's a man of consistent prayer. Elder Morton prays always. Brother, Brother Murray Bird told me, he said, I've never been in a home with a man that prayed more. You can hear him at midnight, every night, every night of his life. He listens to the 12 o'clock news. Uh, and every morning at 5 a.m., you hear him again. Every morning, every morning, you hear him praying. 
Then it'll get up and be at the church at a certain time. But you hear it. You hear it. You hear it. You hear it. The Spirit. But we were together in a, in a very, very tough situation. And it was heavy. And, and he just kept saying, the Spirit knows. The Spirit knows. The Spirit knows. I feel the Holy Ghost. The Spirit knows. The Spirit knows. The Spirit knows. The Spirit knows what to do. The Spirit knows what to say. The Spirit knows how to lead us. The Spirit knows how to help us. The Spirit knows what words ought to be spoken right now. The Spirit knows whether we should go to the right hand or to the left. The Spirit knows. And so we prayed and the Spirit came. And the Spirit did help us. Yes, sir. The Spirit helped us. The anointing of the Lord. Romans 8, 1 through 28 deals with that very concept, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit. Too many times our prayers tend to be selfish in their nature. Selfish in their nature. And we cease to pray as soon as the answer appears. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! Well, I feel the Holy Ghost at night. I could tell you stories. I could tell you a lot of them. People that prayed and prayed angels down. Prayed miracles. Prayed them into existence. And then when the answer came, ceased their prayer. Only to somewhere down the road of life have to go back and rekindle that which was so valuable and so important in the most difficult, desperate times of, of their life. Could I, could I stir something in us tonight? Amen. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding also. Sometimes we pray and we're praying, Dear God, save Sally and Billy and Johnny and Grandma Sue and and Grandpa. Dear God, I want you to give us that building, God. Give us that building. But there are other times when you go to prayer and, and, uh, boy, you're not thinking about saving Billy and Susie and Grandma etc. You're, you're thinking, if I don't touch God today, I'm not going to get out of this alive. If I don't get a hold of the Holy Ghost, it's not going to work like it should. I can get up in the pulpit, Brother Newman, as a pastor. 31 years I've pastored the same assembly. And I've learned a few things. But I have learned this of late especially. That no matter how long I have been preaching the gospel or trying to pastor the assembly, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about what the Spirit's doing until I go to the Spirit, and I get in the Spirit, and I pray in the Spirit, and I talk to God, and I get a hold of the Lord, and I find Him. Come on, somebody. We've got to find Him. Our young people have got to get this. Our children have got to get this. Our saints have got to get this. Amen. Our men have got to get this. Our ladies have got to get this. Praying, praying. Praying in the Spirit. Praying, 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 praying in the Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost here. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, help us. Help us, God. Esau said, bless me, even me also. Bless me, even me also. Bless me. Even me also. He missed the opportunity. What a waste of his life. He never became God's man. He was only interested in the immediate rewards of his efforts. I faint with hunger. Feed me now. What good is a future if I faint? Give it to me right now. Bless me also. Bless me also. Bless me also. I remember a young man in the church that I pastor. He is now pastoring a church. He's got a good congregation of people. Uh, he's pastoring in, in the city of Yuma. He loves God. He, he loves me as his pastor. And God has blessed them, and they're building a church for the kingdom of God. But the day came. The day came. The day came. Brother Wakefield, the day came when somebody put poison in the pot. And I tried to help him. I tried to reason with him. I tried to salvage him. I tried to save him. I had him in my office, and I worked on him. Look, son, here's the Word of God. Here's the Word of God, son. Don't do this. You didn't know anything about God. My hand was on your head 
when you started talking in tongues. I baptized you in Jesus' name. I know this Bible. You're not doing right. This doctrine you're embracing is not of the Word of God. I finally, on a Saturday night, said, shall we stand? And everybody stood. And I said, I'm going to teach tonight instead of prayer service. And I took my time and I dealt with it. And when I was done, there was a precious gift of God. But the night came. Brother D.C. Moody was preaching for us. And the Holy Ghost was operating in such a powerful way. And I watched that young man and his wife under the influence of a devil. I'm telling you, under a devil. Woo! God help me tonight. I watched him sit there and reject it. I called him into my study. And I said to the young man that was the influence, walk out of this door. Don't you ever darken the door of this church again. There's something wrong in your spirit. You leave and never return. You say, Brother Garrett, that's hateful. Yes, it is. But he was killing my babies. And that young man and his wife looked at me and said, you're not righteous. You're not righteous, Brother Garrett, to do that. And I said, I'm doing it to save your soul. And they said, if he goes, we go. And I said, if you must. But I don't want you to. And I'm going to be praying. I didn't go home. I didn't go home that night. I stretched out on the floor. I never did get up off the floor. And I cried. And I prayed. It wasn't that night just dealing with simple things. And God bless Aunt Sally. God give us a good service tomorrow night. Help me to be anointed. It was doing business, business, business. I laid there all night. I got up in the morning, washed my face, combed my hair, started the day. Fed the evangelist, Brother Moody. Didn't tell him a thing. After church that night, I didn't go home again. I just laid in the floor. Oh, my soul was heavy. I never went home. I just laid there. And I cried. And I prayed. God, you've got to save. You've got to save Dan and Erlene. You've got to save them. This is bigger than me, God. I've got to have your help. I've got to have your help. Amen. 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 That was Friday night and Saturday night. And on uh, Sunday morning at 4 a.m., I got up off the floor and took the little rental car that I was driving. Picked up Brother Moody and took him to the airport. Dropped him off. Thank you for being here, Elder. Thank you for coming. God bless you. We're going to have good church. I went back. I was heavy. My spirit was heavy. But as I was passing through the Deck Park Tunnel, down in the bowels of Interstate 10 to that Deck Park Tunnel, some being came and sat down in my car and touched me and said, Everything. It's going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. It didn't happen immediately. You hear me? It didn't happen immediately. It did not. But I had the assurance everything is going to be all right. I was, on, I was in my office. Had one hand on the wall, one hand on the edge of the desk. And I was crying several weeks later. God, you've got to save them. You told me it's going to be all right. But I have to have knowledge and so help me, God, my cell phone rang. And a man said, is this Pastor Garrett? And I said, it is. And he said, you don't know me. I said, who is this? He said, it's not important who I am. I have something to tell you. You have been asking for answers, and I have them for you. I'm going to tell you where. I'm going to tell you who. And I'm going to give you proof that you need. And so help me. It happened just that way. Just that way. And I left that little study that afternoon. And I went to the first address. And I went to the second. And I went to the third. And when I left there, I had everything I needed. I was standing the next day. And the phone rang again. Did you get what you needed? I got it. Okay. I said, who is this? What's your number? Let me call you back. He said, it's not important who I am. You can't call me back. I said, thank you. And I took what I had. And I went to that couple and I said, this is the answer from the Holy Ghost. And it saved them. I'm talking tonight about praying, 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 praying. Are you satisfied? Listen to me. Are you satisfied to let your backslidden husband go to hell? Are you content? Well, your babies that don't know God and don't live for God to go to hell. 
Are you content for this church to sit here with a beautiful facility? Gorgeous chairs. I'm telling you, it's above average in its appearance. Folks walk by and go to hell. How are we going to do this? I'm not even going to finish tonight. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? We're going to pray. And 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 we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice right now. That sister was not out of line doing what she did. I feel the Holy Ghost in it. Go ahead and respond to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You've got every answer. You've got every situation. God, there's nothing that you do not know. There is nothing, God, that you do not understand. In the name of Jesus. 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 I'm going to end with this as musicians come prepare to sing tonight. Who in the days of his flesh, when he'd offered up prayers and supplications. This is talking about when Jesus prayed in the garden and his sweat became as great drops of blood. And he cried, not my will, but thy will be done. Weast word study says in the days of his flesh offered up special, definite petitions for that which he needed and supplications, doing this with strong trying, cryings and tears to the one who was able and was heard on account of his godly fear. Prayers! That word there is the Greek word dio, a special, definite request. Can I help somebody tonight? When you come to pray, you need to tell God what you want. You need to tell God. Hear me, girls. You need to tell God. Dio, I need, I want. And the word supplications has in it its, in its connotation and definition the same thing that that priest would do when he brought from the altar that basin of blood. And he would walk to the labor and cleanse, go into that holy place and sprinkle. And once a year, the Shekinah would return and into the holy of holies. Supplications. It's the bringing of an offering. Who in the days of his flesh, a heart torn with anguish, and suffering. A soul in conflict. Which is the conflict of the ages. A contest in which righteousness is facing down the powers of darkness. Waging a battle for the lost race. Listen to me. Listen to me, folks. Please hear me. Please hear me. Please hear me. The flesh got involved with the Spirit. I'm going to take my flesh to the prayer room. I'm going to take my flesh to the altar. I'm going to take my flesh from the warm comfort of my bed to the cold stillness of an early morning prayer. And when I come in, I'm bringing... That which is heart rending. Something's going to move. Something's going to move. Oh, I feel God. I feel God. Prayer. Prayer. He call you all Prayer makes the difference. Supplication. Prayer. Hallelujah. 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 As young Sister Connell begins to sing, I'm inviting everybody in this house that will. I'm asking you to move from where you are. I'm not going to ask you to kneel where you are. I'm going to ask you to get your flesh involved. And come, come, 
even if you just come stand. But we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. We've got to pray. Holy Ghost, you've got to help me pray. I don't know what to pray for. Is I Something I can do. I can pray. Come on. I know I'm putting a little pressure on you. Let me act like I'm at home. Get up from where you are. Make a move. Make a move. In Jude, we find him writing in verse 3, I wanted to write of our common salvation. But he said, I realized it was necessary for me to write to you of the faith which was once delivered to the saints. It's very specific in Greek. It was delivered once for all. We do not have an evolving gospel that needs to be updated with the latest theories of psychology and sociology and legality. But we have the faith which once for all was delivered to the saints. It saved people in the first century. It saves people in the 21st century.